Our next unit is on the study of ecology. Ecology is a scientific study of interactions among organisms and between organisms and their environment or their surroundings. So it's how things interact and respond to each other. Okay. We have several different levels of organization dealing with ecology. Our smallest level is the individual, or one. Our next level is a population. It's a group of individuals of the same species living in the same area. Third, we have our community. These are different populations living together in one area. Next, we have the ecosystem. These are all the communities in an area and all of the non-living components of that environment. We'll talk more about these coming up. Next, we have our biome, which are a group of similar ecosystems with same climate and similar communities. We have the desert biome, we have the rainforest, we have others we will discuss. Our largest level is the biosphere. This is a part of Earth in which life exists. It includes air, land, and the water. Okay. Here's another way to look at it, from the smallest, our individual, to a population, to a community, to the ecosystem, to the biome, and then our biosphere. We have several different factors in our ecosystem. We talked about the living and the non-living. So our biotic factors, here's a definition, of all are all living things. The bacteria, protista, animals, fungi, and plants. In our abiotic factors are all of our non-living things, the physical and the chemical conditions. We have our populations. We talked about these in our different levels. A population are organisms of the same species living in one area. There are several different characteristics of a population. First, we have the geographic distribution or the range. This is the area where individuals live. They show this a lot on maps. Next, we have the density. This is the number of individuals per unit of area. Our third characteristic of a population is the growth rate. This is how the number of individuals in a population increase or decrease over time. Still dealing with our populations, we're going to look at our population growth. This is how the number of individuals change over time we have three factors that can affect the population size. One is the number of births or the birth rate. Two, it's the number of deaths or the death rate. And third is the number of individuals that enter or leave the population. Immigration coming in, emigration leaving. Okay. Immigration for coming in, use the I to think of in, and for emigration, leaving, think of E for exiting. This is important. As the world population increases, this is bad for global stability. All of our different levels, from population through the biosphere, they have what we call a carrying capacity. This is the maximum number of individuals that the environment can support. Or another way to put it is, how many individuals can live in one area? An area has different carrying capacities for different populations. If the environment changes, the carrying capacity changes. And lastly, we have factors that limit the growth of populations. We have our biotic limiting factors. Remember, biotic means living. These are the factors that become limiting when the density of a population reaches a certain level. Examples are competition, predation, parasitism, and disease. We'll talk more about these later on in this unit. 
The other factors that limit the growth of a population are the abiotic limiting factors. They affect the population in the same way regardless of population size. These include weather, natural disasters, hurricanes, droughts, fires. We have the seasonal cycles, El Nino, La Nina. We have human activities, cutting down forests, pollutions.